everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast. We got a couple special guests this week. We got Game Over Jesse up in here. Hello. Thanks Zelda for having me. Zelda Master on. Extraordinaire. It, you know what? You might know more about Zelda now than I do. Uh, maybe. You know I go way back. But uh, now that I've been covering like everything, I forget a lot of stuff. I, I would say everyone has their own uh, little niche things that they're they're into with the Zelda series. So you'll have your uh, certain Zelda games, and I'll have mine. Miss Click will have hers. Everyone has their own, like, so. Zel- like Zelda too. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I, I I just ranked every single Zelda game the other day, and people saw me put Zelda Two: The Adventure of Link at the number two spot, and they almost died. I remember when it was your number one. That that'll do it. I know, and I think uh, they cried when I had like spirit track spirit tracks ranked ahead of Ocarina of Time, and they're like, "Oh, oh that's funny." Yeah. Wow. That might upset some people. That <laughs> yeah, might upset some people. That's like, I mean, I have a, I have Breath of the Wild at the top, so at least I got something that everyone mm. universally thinks is a good game. Um, mm. Maybe shouldn't say that. There's some Zelda fans that uh, aren't too happy about the lack of dungeons. Uh, so yeah. we also have Miss Click Gaming over here. Hello, welcome in. Oh, thanks for having me. I don't know why I'm welcoming people. This what? is awkward. Hey, hey why not? thanks for having me. That's what you're used to, right? You're a Twitch streamer over there and got a decent sized YouTube channel going on for all your highlights and clips and all that jazz. Also, mm-hmm. you're a regular over on what, the Spawncast, right? You're over there a lot? Yep. Yep, every Saturday. Yep, uh, every every Saturday <laughs> over there. So nice to have you on. I'm glad to have a couple guests with me because guess what, guys? This is like the week of the 35th anniversary of Zelda. Uh, so this podcast is going to be all about that. Uh, Nintendo kind of sort of already got the ball rolling after that Nintendo Direct with a game that seems to be sparking controversy for reasons that I'm sure we're going to have a lot of fun talking about. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we're, we're gonna, you know what? Let's just start with that. Okay, so Skyward Sword HD coming July 16th. Great. I'm glad we're getting it. It's like the only game, like the only 3D Zelda game besides Breath of the Wild because it doesn't need to be yet. Uh, that hasn't been like remade or re-released because uh, we got Ocarina of Time 3D and Majora's Mask 3D on 3DS. Obviously, Twilight Princess HD, The Wind Waker HD on Wii U. So now we finally have Skyward Sword HD. Um, first off, are you guys even excited for it? Like, are you happy we're getting it? I mean, I got my little. I don't have a. I don't have a Wii anymore, but I do have like a a Wii Mote candy tin to hold and nice. pretend I'm playing right now. Nice. So, what do you? Are you guys glad we're getting Skyward Sword? You want to start? Jesse? I am. Yeah, I, I am ecstatic, but Miss Click actually has a uh, a tragic story about how her headphones were damaged that she was uh, so excited. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i pretty excited, too. Skyward Sword's actually my favorite Zelda. So, yeah, I actually, yeah, uh, when we were watching it, you know, the direct, I kind of stood up and I just ripped my cable absolutely <laughs> in half. So I need new headphones now. But you know what? I'll, I'll, take, I'll take having to buy new headphones because... There, there she is. Oh, bless. Go. There we go, Jesse. That's, I, that's what I we're have talking a, about. I have a giant. I just set him up at, in my entryway, actually. I have a, my giant Link on his loft wing. First yeah, four you're figure. making me want to go grab my first four figure Scurvo figurine. Oh, yeah. Right no, first four. They're they they're amazing. But, yeah, yeah, I have my loft wing up in the uh, entryway, and I'm, I'm so excited. But maybe I'll put him on a coffee table, actually. <laughs> nah, that'd be dangerous. That'd be, yeah, <laughs> the, that thing's huge. I have cats, so they'd that probably would, be that like, would oh, that'd not be good. Loft wing, whack. <laughs> <laughs> so, needless to say, you were pretty excited. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, because I, I, I don't know if I saw your Skyward Sword reaction. I saw your reaction to uh, Pyra and Mithra getting announced, and you were going at it. So, to imagine a reaction bigger than that, that you break your headphones, is uh, pretty special. I think it's two different types of like excitement that I have. Like Pyra and Mithra, I have my my quarrel with with Xenoblade Chronicles Two and blah blah blah. But I I, I was excited because I know that they deserve to be in the game. That oh, yeah. that was my excitement for Pyra and Mithra because I just for a while I wanted Rex and Pyra, sure. and so to see Pyra and Mithra, you know themselves get the whole spotlight, I was excited because it was well justly deserved in my opinion. Skyward Sword, it was more of the reaction of like, this is personal. Like this feels like this direct was like tailored at the end towards towards me feeling selfish. <laughs> but yeah, it was two totally different types of reactions for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, for a long time, Skyward Sword was looked at as almost like the black sheep of the so-called 3D Zeldas because people didn't like the motion controls and it came out at like the end of the Wii era. So just a lot of people didn't even give it a chance. Um, and it's weird because 
everyone's like excited now that they added button mapping in and like control to the right stick. And I just don't care. I'm gonna, I'm motion controlling my way through this thing all over again. That was my favorite part of the game. Yeah. Was the motion controls. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, no, uh, I I agree. The whole game is designed around motion control. And we think back to the interview. I think it was Game Informer. They had had an interview with Ayanuma San quite a few years ago about the remake, and he basically said it was near impossible. I think that was his way of putting. I don't want to change the art form that I made the game for. But I think he did realize, you know, after all of the adamant fans online that said, I'm not going to play it if you don't have it. I think he's like, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll work and find a way to put the, the, the button controls on there. And obviously there are a lot of people who can't play with motion just sheerly because that's like, they can't. And so I'm glad that he finally did decide to go ahead and add it in. But I will say for the for the main experience, as long as you're patient with motion controls, the I loved it. I had I stood up the whole time playing it, and the game is designed for it. It's just it's so satisfying when you play it the way it's meant to be played. Yeah, it was yeah, funny. I, I remember the uh, controversy way back when. Um, God, was it GameSpot's review of it or whatever? They said like the motion controls are dog crap, and then they show a video of the guy trying to do it, and he's, like, literally Wiimote waggling, trying to attack. And it's like, but, like, did you not watch the tutorials? You are literally playing the game incorrectly and then complaining it's not doing what you want it to do. Right. And yeah, it's not Twilight that Princess. was a you. huge thing back then, because mm -hmm. when the game was first shown off by Nintendo, it also didn't work on stage. <laughs> Oops. So, it was <laughs> kind of... That was mighty unfortunate, just because, like, sheerly for the fact of... A stage setup's not going to be the same as a home setup. Plus, you have all that Bluetooth interference. No. Oh, same yeah, thing for sure. would happen with the Wii U era with the Splatoon community. Mm -hmm. They'd have tournaments and lands, but they have all the Wii U's in the same room. And trying to use those controllers, you had a lot of interference. So when you had like tournaments and lands for the Splatoon community, they had to be in separate rooms because all the controllers and the Bluetooth devices were interfering with each other. So they couldn't even host the tournament properly like the first couple of times. So they had to split it up. And it's just unfortunate that people look to that presentation and not think about the technological kind of interferences that they had to experience. And I felt bad for Miyamoto-san and everything because he was so excited and they were just like children on Christmas Day. And you could tell they were trying to smile through it and they handled it pretty well, it's I think. It's worked in practice. Yeah, uh, Skyward Sword was. Uh, Skyward Sword was also uh, a lot of people. Whenever they think of uh, the Zelda series, obviously they think of Al Numa now. But um, I think after Ocarina of Time, Al Numa started to take over the Zelda series. But Skyward Sword was actually the game where Miyamoto returned as producer or something like that to have more involvement with the Zelda game for like one last hurrah or whatever mm -hmm. so it's kind of sad that it ended up uh, getting the attention that it did for the wrong reasons i suppose and even after skyward sword released i remember there was a bunch of interviews with al numa uh, when they were talking about zelda uh before it was even known as zelda wii u they were just talking about the future of the zelda series and he was saying that they loved the one-to-one -one motion control so much that they can't imagine making a zelda game without it anymore and it's kind of interesting to see how that's gone to where not only did they make uh, Zelda games without it, but they also ended up remaking that exact game with optional controls. So it's it's interesting to see how like their vision of what they want the Zelda series to become is influenced by the fans and the popular demand community. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not surprising because at the time, Skyward Sword was like the most expensive game Nintendo had ever made. And then it only sold three and a half million, which mm -hmm. was a huge letdown for them on a hundred million plus system like that. Like it, it was just it, it, it must have felt so bad to be them and like just feel their vision be rejected by the very community yeah. that they thought they were creating this masterpiece for, um, you know, getting Miyamoto directly back involved again for this, you know pivotal game because even like motion controls not only was supposed to be the future of the franchise the game itself is like the story that sets up yep. everything mm -hmm. so it was such a pivotal game and so many you know to think now you know breath of the wild blowing up a 20 plus million sales and knowing that hey there's like 16 million zelda fans now like brand new they have no idea why zelda is the way it is because they didn't play this game that's that's right. one exciting reason that's coming back Mm -hmm. um and they had to do the button controls to make it more accessible plus with switch Lite, you kind of 
you know, you, you sure. kind of shoehorn in where every every game has to have traditional controls in some way, and I'm sure it'll work fine. I didn't I didn't get as crazy as you, Miss Click. I didn't stand up while playing it all the time. Um, I discovered that wrist flicks will work just as well as big arm movements. Okay. Um, so the reason, okay, so I started out doing what like the exaggerated movements it would have you do, and then I got in a situation where I was fighting like seven Bokoblins or something. There's only like one, like two times in the game that happens and one of them you're just hack and slashing away don't want to really spoil too much here from people that haven't played the cool part yeah really, it was yeah, cool that's, that's such a cool part but I, yeah. I, I i screwed up and i dragged like three bokoblins into another room with four others and i'm like okay so this whole taking my time to swing at one at a time is the rest beat on me or not is this isn't working what happens if i just flick my, oh look at this i can flick my wrist and i can like wrap it a tackle oh then okay Thank you. You did make it so you can do this. You just don't tell people about it. All right, cool. We're good. <laughs> I think and also it's like getting down the timing, though, for the game. Yes. Like I think a lot of people and I always say Twilight Princess is superior on the GameCube because the motion controls are so atrocious to me on the Wii. And people mm-hmm. who played Twilight Princess on the Wii, I think, expected Skyward Sword to be the same. Yep. So when they couldn't achieve the same goal, you know, from like shaking just the nunchuck randomly to do a spin attack or something, oh. um, you know, it was it was pretty jarring for them. But I feel like when you dedicate enough time to play the tutorial, to learn it, you kind of get the timing down. You can kind of, I guess, move down into the finer movements of things because you're not just trying to like fish hands McGee it. You know what I mean? Like you're not just like flopping everywhere. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah. Twilight Princess really set those expectations of, like, just waggle your way through and then when you use the bow, point and shoot. Right. And to be fair, there is a point and shoot item in there. It's just not the bow. Um, I always thought, like, the frustrations with the bow to be interesting since they did it in Wii Sports Resort and that sold a lot of copies. This is true. Different audience, I guess, maybe. Um, Okay, so... I think we're all pretty glad that it's coming back. It's in HD. It looks better than ever. Uh, 60 FPS. That should be really nice. A uh, nice touch. First 3D Zelda in 60 FPS. Um, so that's cool. I'm excited. Going to play the hell out of it. Probably all going to play it. But uh, let's just say people are not happy about how much the game costs. You guys have any thoughts on that $60 price point and the way that people are really, in my opinion, maybe overreacting a little bit? an overreacting internet really when when does the internet ever overreact uh first off let's preface this i'm sure all of us here would agree a cheaper game we'd totally take it okay. if we had to pay less for a game by all means if i had to pay less i'd be down for that yep uh but unfortunately you know we are dealing with companies you know game companies who um make decisions that we might not always understand um, when I try to understand why they'd still be charging 60, if they're not adding additional content, they haven't said if they are or not, if they're adding anything extra. But I, I think if I was, you know, in their shoes, uh, like trying to rationalize, I guess, again, the game only sold 3.5 million. Um, and Breath of the Wild sold 20 plus million. I think they're realizing that the majority of people <laughs> haven't played this game. And so I think more... <laughs> I think that they were hoping that more people, because they realized they were playing this game for the first time, it'd be a new game to them, that they would be probably more accepting to pay the $60 price tag. However, people don't see it as a new game to them, as a game they've never played before, a game they've never experienced the story or the music, which is the first full orchestrated Zelda game. Like before then, it was MIDI tracks and pre-recorded clips. This is the first time a full-out orchestra was brought out, and that's what prompted the the goddess, you know, the, the symphony of goddesses tour. Um, and I think a lot of people, you know, they kind of just minimize it and say, because it came out so long ago, because it is a port, um, because there's no new content announced, uh, it's not worth the 60. And, and to me, like, I can understand that. Um, I sympathize with it, but also at the same time, the game, just because it's older, it doesn't make it any less worth the 60 in my opinion. But, you know, again, I wouldn't also disagree if they wanted to lower the price because that's less money you have to spend. Well, that's, that's always the debate, too, about the, the $60 price point and the value of games. I, a, a, mm-hmm. The wider video game industry has created this expectation that games are only worth 60 at launch and they're never worth that much money again. And that is the way the rest of the industry treats it. Um, when they re-release games, they don't re-release them at the same price, typically. There are some examples where they did. Uh, but... Nintendo, the, the the problem we have is like the last 
like port we got that didn't really have new content and but we don't by the way we don't know i said there, there's amiibo functionality in this game and that was not in the original so we we don't really know right what else there could be hiding right now there's a long time between now and july mm-hmm. uh but assuming there is no new content the reason this feels weird is because the last port we got was super mario 3d world and they added an entire bowser's fury mode so they added like six hours of new content. It makes people feel like, okay, that kind of can justify charging 60 again. Uh, right. But then before that, the last like HD port we got was 3D All-Stars, which included three games for the same price. And people are, I'll try to rationalize if Mario Galaxy wasn't worth 60 on its own from the Wii era, a much more popular game, then why is Skyward Sword, who also has reworked controls because they had to rework the motion controls from Galaxy as well, um why you know people feel kind of slighted by nintendo where they're either overvaluing zelda or undervaluing um galaxy or something like that and so nintendo themselves kind of put themselves in this position when they released that three pack and then they said hey look we're not right for zelda as far as we're aware of course we don't know yet Mm -hmm. i agree nintendo kind of helped create some of that controversy themselves because like 3d all-stars wasn't that long ago before that, it was always $60 ports. I mean, they, they even took Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, which was not a $60 game, and charged 60 on Switch. <laughs> so, like, they've been worse. Um, and people bring up the fact that on Wii, Skyward Sword was $50 at launch. $60 right, if back then. If you got the right. Or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think <laughs> it's it's really it's really hard to, again, rationalize because you're, you're trying to understand people who are sitting in a room and just make decisions and we're obviously not there um and this isn't me defending them this is me like just thinking out loud of why i try to rationalize from the sounds of it is they really just love skyward sword that much like it means that much to them um and i mean granted like maybe that's adding personal feelings into business and maybe that is more of a detriment maybe you know i I think it would serve everybody uh, better if Nintendo, you know, had lowered the price, they'd sell more copies, people wouldn't have as much controversy. Um, I don't know at what point, you know, uh, people would all be pleased. I think people are going to be, you know, unhappy regardless. But definitely, I do agree. The having the trilogy out, um, you know, at 60, you're basically getting three games for that price. People were still upset about it. You know, they were also upset about the uh, the timed release and everything. We still don't know if Zelda's is going to be a timed release if they do bring out more games, which I feel like they still are. I think, honestly, like Nintendo is just like, we find this important, so we're going to charge this much for it. And, you know, I I think Nintendo's made a lot of business practices that are completely out there. Um, so I'm not fully surprised by it. Actually, the week before on the Spawncast, we had talked about it. OJ and I were specifically saying Skyward Sword's going to be by itself. It's going to be $60. And there's going to be something else for us at the uh, later on in the year. And that's exactly what happened. And people were still upset. Um, So for us, I think it's just like we it's learning to identify that Nintendo just does things that don't always make as much sense as the rest of the industry. And sometimes that's a good thing. And then obviously, sometimes that's a very bad thing. Well, I think uh, when you look at the Skyward Sword in particular, because I I did a video on this, uh, the Nintendo's a business. So the first thing to think about is what can we get away with pricing? So right. with 3D All-Stars, they made it a limited release. People got pissed about it, right? They, they, the whole fear of missing out, you got to buy it now before March 31st next year. And if you don't, you won't even have it digitally. We're just taking it away from you, which they'll probably end up repackaging them on an individual basis, knowing Nintendo and selling them at 30, 40 bucks a pop. I have no idea. That just feels like a very Nintendo thing to do. Uh, but even if they don't, or even if they bring it back, like they make you wait a year and they're like, oh, did you miss it the first time? Like with the NES Classic, let's bring it back again, mm. um, which is also a very Nintendo thing to do. I think that they look at it as just a purely business perspective. It's Zelda. Zelda's more popular now than it's ever been in the history of the franchise. Not, right. it's not even close. Um, most people haven't played this game. It's going to be mm-hmm. a new game for most people. We're going to sell at least 8 million copies of it at 60 bucks a pop. Yes. And... From a business perspective, well, to make that much money at forty dollars a pop, they'd have to sell twelve million. So at thirty dollars yes. a pop, they'd have to sell sixteen million copies. They probably don't think even at thirty dollars a pop, it's selling sixteen million copies. They need to balance out how much money they can make to maximize their profits because Nintendo is a business. They they first and foremost don't care about you, the consumer. They care about making money. Now yes. they try to make money by making good products, at least what they feel is good products. Sometimes 
they're always not, not all they are cracked up to be. But Skyward Sword to me was all it was cracked up to be back in the day, let alone today and fixing the issue that people have with it when they didn't like the motion controls. So I think it's all about perceived value. How sure. many people are going to spend 60 bucks and be perfectly happy with the game and spend hundreds of mm-hmm. hours with it versus how many people are going to spend 60 bucks and feel like they got ripped off? Of course. And you don't have to buy a game. I always put this out. You never have to buy something. You don't like the price. Don't pay it. Right. Or buy it used. That's a very valid reason still to this day, too. I buy a lot of things used because I want to pay full retail price and for a, it. And if sales drop off a cliff, it's going to end up in discount bins in a year anyways. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Not Nintendo, obviously. First party no. sales are yeah, yeah, very no. rare. but It will not be a Nintendo Select before the end of yeah. the generation. Sorry. Yeah. I know people might be hoping for a $20 version, but I mean, it just... <laughs> I Nintendo no, they're still selling Breath of the Wild at at MSRP of sixty bucks four years later with no sign they're slowing down that until may, maybe the I mean will they even lower it when Breath of the Wild two comes out I they might just say nope you, oh you want Breath of the Wild two go buy the first game so you know what's happening in the second game oh and then go spend <laughs> right. sixty more on Age of Calamity so then you really know everything going on. no 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 they put it they put a code at the end of uh they rework and release a patch. Uh, to the end of Breath of the Wild, so you have to play Breath of the Wild first <laughs> to get into Breath of the Wild oh, Two. God. That would be horrible. <laughs> oh, and they'd charge you five oh. bucks oh, for yeah. that little patch too. for sure. Oh, the little extra story DLC <laughs> connecting it. Yeah. By yeah. the way, five dollars. <laughs> oh God, I don't think they're gonna go that far. <laughs> no. Keeping Breath no. of the Wild at sixty. I mean, the, the thing is, Breath of the Wild, and and this is Nintendo's logic most of the time is, well, our titles keep landing in the top twenty every month worldwide. Why are we gonna lower our price and lose money? There is a reason why they have how much money in the I, bank. I think I think everyone wishes, every company wishes they didn't have to lower their game prices and keep their games in the top 20, just always. Well, that's the pattern that Nintendo's typically always had. You always see third parties and even PlayStation and Xbox. Over a year or two uh, after the game releases, you'll slowly see the $60 price tag go to like 50 40 30 and get lower and lower. Sometimes not so But slow. with Nintendo... Yeah, well, but with Nintendo, it's like you can go and until it's released as a Nintendo Select, it's still at that uh, same price that it launched at. And if people forget, by the time they make a game on Nintendo Select, if there even is a Nintendo Select line on Switch, which I don't know if there will be, uh, right. because literally every game they release is breaking records, so I don't, they obviously clearly don't see a reason, just keep releasing more games. Um, is, I have hope for ARMS. Yeah. I'm 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 wondering if that might be one of the first ones when whenever they announce Arms two, it'd be like, hey, now you can get Arms for twenty bucks. Um, but anyways, I I think that Nintendo doesn't do that that select line until it's to a point the game is just not selling at all. Like I think back, like you know, they rapid fired selects back on Wii U, but nothing was really selling. <laughs> So right. they really yeah. were just trying to get all the sales they could. Like people bring up, well, Skyward Sword HD costs more than Twilight Princess and the Wind Waker HD, which had more work put into them. Okay, but, but how many Wii U sold? Yeah, I'm like they're just really trying to get. I mean, they as I said, they sold Donkey Kong <laughs> Tropical Freeze at forty bucks on Wii U because they just wanted the game to sell. Oh, they and were just trying Switch, to stay afloat. Guys, for people who don't remember, people were just saying Nintendo shouldn't make consoles anymore. They should just make games. Just oh. ship the games out to other consoles. That was Both a whole party. controversy in itself. Yeah, oh. Nintendo doesn't know how to make systems anymore. They don't know what they're doing. So they need to go get on PlayStation and Xbox. And it's like, but look what they did with Switch. That's the exact reason when you need Nintendo because the other companies are iterative. Nintendo's like, hey, look, we're gonna find a hole in the marketplace and then fill it. Sure. Yeah. Or they create a whole new niche you didn't even know you wanted. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, oh, their handheld gaming is always popular. So you know what happens if we take our handheld and meld it with console and just see what happens? Oh, hey, look, that's popular. Who knew? Oh, no. Oh, well, Sony tried it with the Vita. Not really, because they still had the PlayStation 3. They didn't fully commit to Vita as a portable home console. Um, no one has, really, until Nintendo decided to do it. There's there's other products out there. You guys could talk about, like, the GPD Win and all that. Really niche product, but uh, really expensive, by the way. I think right. The new, I think the GPD Win 3, the cheapest version, is 800 Yeah, like Alienware, yeah, like a grand above. That's oh, crazy. Yeah, the, the Alienware thing. That's like, oh, yeah, look at the Switch Killer. I'm like, dude, if that ever releases, it's $2,000. Like, a handheld <laughs> laptop, dude. It's giant. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. I'd like to have one because I, I love tech. Yeah, it's, it's also got like an hour battery life, though. <laughs> oh, I know. You're not, you're playing that by an outlet at all times. <laughs> <laughs> um, So, uh, Gabriel Jesse, what, you got any thoughts on the pricing? Do you think Nintendo's 
just yeah squeezy people, uh, or uh you're like hey screw this well i so they've announced that well they didn't even really announce it they just kind of put it on their website that it will have amiibo support of some kind and uh i am of the belief that it's not necessarily nintendo making skyward sword it's tantalus who made twilight princess hd that was uh something that i was uh talking about for a long time and if nintendo lets uh Tantalus do similar things to Skyward Sword as they let them do to Twilight Princess HD. Sort of like how when Nintendo let Grezzo make Ocarina of Time 3D and then do do, uh, even more changes and have even more freedom with Majora's Mask 3D to where it wasn't just uh, fixing this dungeon or whatever. They added in like new ponds, uh, like two completely new fishing ponds when the game didn't even have one to begin with. And uh, they changed some of the side quests and stuff. So if Tantalus gets the same type of freedom, I would really love to see what kind of stuff could potentially uh, be shown off as a way for Nintendo to kind of persuade those people that don't feel that it's worth $60 now to be worth $60 after showing off stuff. Like like if it uh, releases... I think Twilight Princess HD released... um, the normal version was $50, and then you could buy a version that came with the Wolf Link Amiibo for 60 So even if Skyward Sword HD was 60 but it came with like a collector's edition or something that had an Amiibo with it for $70, um, I think that would be a, just like a little bit more of a way to help persuade people, especially if it unlocked a new dungeon or something like that in the game as well. So I am I think Nintendo is holding out for the next Direct or an official trailer to go over all of the stuff that they've changed and added to Skyward Sword because they've always changed a bunch of stuff in the Zelda games, like Wind Waker shortened the Triforce quest, Twilight Princess shortened the Tears of Light stuff. I don't know what be changed uh, story-wise or gameplay-wise aside from Maybe the motion control in Skyward Sword. That was seen... Remember the dousing thing? Some people got really oh, bored yeah, with that. Dousing. That's one thing they could maybe tighten up. I think yeah. the, the quality of life changes, I would like to think. Obviously, like we think one of the most um, amazing things that they did with the Ocarina of Time remake was the Iron Boots. You no longer had to pause mm-hmm. the menu anymore. It just became a toggable item, you know, just on the, on the hotkey. I think things like uh, every time you pick up a new, like when you started a, a fresh play of your same account on Skyward Sword, you know, you pick up a blue rupee. Every time you start the game again, it's going to tell you about that blue ruby every time you pick it up or you pick up an amber. And it's like, we don't need to hear about it every single time we start over. Um, maybe making some of Fi's. I don't know if they'll make some of Fi's dialogue optional. I think they want you to kind of like be annoyed with her computer side <laughs> or her character development. Maybe we don't um, need to hear about the value of a rupee every time I pick it up. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I mean. Yeah, I think I don't, quality of life things. Um, I would like to think that they've seen enough people talking about it online to where you know it's kind of been enough feedback to where they could just change that. Um, but again, you know, it's hard to know with Nintendo sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing that I would like to see is if um, so in when you're flying on the loft wing, they have those uh, little portal things or whatever that you fly through the yeah, circle floating things. rock structure yeah and it gives you a big speed boost and that's similar to Wind Waker HD they felt that it took too long to sell from one place to another so they gave you that extra sell so if so they made sad. flying from one place to another on a loft wing faster sure. like they did in the other games or uh, even if uh, something like how you could just press a button and go from Wolf Link to Hylian Link in Twilight Princess if they had something towards just a press of a button to go up into the sky. That way you don't have to search for uh, whatever specific yeah. bird statue. Yeah, or a deck to jump off of. If you could just yeah. press the button and then it would send you. Um, Daniel and I were talking about it would be really cool if they had something like instead of having to load in Skyloft when you're flying through it, if all of the sky was because of the extra processing power of the switch. If it was all just rendered uh, together mm. instead of like each area being individual. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. That, that would be nice. That, w- that would be really nice. I mean, there's a lot of things they could do how much they're going to. Yeah. I don't know. Right. Um, I, so 
All right, let's move on. <laughs> I, I can literally, we could make this just the Skyward Sword podcast, I swear. I love that game yep. so much. It's in my top five, so. Oh, I, I do want to ask Eric. You're, you're Okay, so Eric, you are kind of a raw gaming consumer in general these days. You're more old school in terms of yes. like, when you used to play games. And Breath of the Wild is like the first major Zelda game you really dove into deeply. Like any no, Zelda yeah, game? You, you helped in the Triforce Heroes walkthrough. I did. I did help in the Triforce Heroes walkthrough. You're right. Yep. Anyways. <laughs> and he, he's seen me play more Zelda than... Yeah, oh, geez. and I've been like massively binge watching uh, Game Grumps at work, and of course, just watching them play through it, just because it's something nice to have on in the background and entertainment with. Your and, games oh yeah, for sure. Uh, so, uh, are you going to spend sixty bucks on Skyward Sword HD? You, I think you're the kind of consumer they're sort of targeting. Kind of got into <laughs> Zelda with Breath of the Wild. Haven't really played a lot of the series. Here's a game we think is vitally important. Will you buy it? I mean, not not day one. Um, I'll probably end up watching you play it a little bit. <laughs> no, just to be completely honest. It's okay. not, not not because... What do you mean? Is it, I'm just going to borrow your copy and well, call it no, good. No, 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 no. No, <laughs> no, no. I just want to see how it uh, how it looks, how it feels, things like that. Um, I'm not against buying it. It. it I just want to see you motion control. <laughs> I want to see you... I want to yeah. get you on a live stream and have you stand up and just try not to hit me as you're trying to fight the Bokoblin. <laughs> All right. Or Girahim. Oh, God, I can't imagine. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, dude, Girahim's yeah. a great character. Yeah, he's no, for sure. One of the best. I can't believe we went yeah. this long. I haven't even brought him up yet. <laughs> he's, he's so awesome. Uh, well, we, we didn't even really get to touch on the story, necessarily. Oh, like, well, I feel like yeah, I was trying to avoid the story a little bit. Just yeah, yeah so but... I feel like there's like a, a difference of opinion, you know, of people who play mainly for the gameplay aspect of just like the game itself um, versus like the story and the, the what it attributes to the lore. Mm-hmm. I think there'll be two different types of people who are attracted to it. Whereas if you don't really care about the lore, the game might not mean as much to you versus to me. Like, I love lore. Like, I'm like oh my God, digging yes. and diving. Like, Jesse obviously loves lore, mm-hmm. you know, so it's like it, it attracts us in a different way than it will some other people. Like some people just play Skyward uh, Breath of the Wild. Pardon me. They play Breath of the Wild, and it's like that. That's the, the, she's fighting, he's fighting this big thing. Like okay, but they don't understand. Like you know, there's just like there's so much the lore in that game. Have gone at it, yeah, for sure. Every and, time people are like, "There's no story in Breath of the Wild," I'm like, "Oh, it's there. You need to discover it." And that's yeah, yeah. if you haven't played the whole series, you probably aren't really discovering. I just, like it makes me realize so many of them are new Zelda gamers. I'm like, oh, they're not really gonna understand what they're even seeing right in front of them. Right, like yep. when you read those tablets about the lore of the uh, Azora out on that area, it's like. How I wonder, like, how many new fans really understand what they're reading right now, and sure, fully yeah. grasp what's in some of the diaries? And yeah, I think Nintendo did a really good job of uh, letting everyone know during the Skyward Sword reveal how a lot of the features that people liked from Breath of the Wild originated Started. in Skyward Sword. Yeah. So I think that was uh, a good way to incentivize people who may not know anything about the story but just care about gameplay to uh maybe go and check it out since they can be yeah, like oh okay well the stamina meter did start here it had uh, a big priority on collecting and stuff like that so, uh, yeah yeah if you're one of those zelda uh, gamers those new fans out there that just got into the series of breath of the wild and one of your complaints was there wasn't enough story for you which i can understand from a certain perspective since you have to discover the story in this game mm-hmm. play skyward sword it is one of the most in-depth stories that is so in your face throughout the whole game that it's, I think has ever existed in a Zelda game. Beautiful. And it, mm-hmm. it, it, it's, it's one of the best stories I think Nintendo's had in really any of their games. I agree. Um, People think the uh, the memory of Link in Breath of the Wild, where it's uh, like Zelda crying with Link, and it's all rainy and stormy, and they've been chased and everything is emotional but there's like a dozen different moments like oh my gosh it is so emotional in skyward sword and yeah there's uh, you know i'll just say this there's a moment that happens in breath of the wild i'm not even worried about spoilers anymore for that where the sword kind of talks in a cutscene. yes for those who don't know that's sky that's a direct reference to skyward sword i lost it when that reference and so Locked There's it. a possibility that because that happened, it could come back in Breath of the Wild 2. All the more reason you want to play Skyward Sword if you really care about mm-hmm. understanding what's what might be happening with that Master Sword in the next game. Yeah. Um, 
Like that that little reference. Like, oh, wait a second. I thought she was never coming back. Okay. Well, all right. Yep. Um. What what is happening? Yep. Like I don't want to spoil too much. Like there's a lot of things that could that could come back around from Skyward Sword. Yep. Um. Oh, it's 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 gonna be. I can't wait. Uh. So. <laughs> that being said, obviously this is the 35th anniversary. Happened on the 21st. So this past weekend. Uh, obviously went by without Nintendo saying anything, which is pretty par for the course. Uh, whenever they have plans for something, they don't acknowledge it on social media. The anniversaries they always seem to acknowledge on social media are the ones they don't do anything for. Like they've acknowledged Metroid's 25th in the past and the 30th and did nothing for those. So <laughs> uh, when they don't talk about it, it's because they have a lot to say. It's just not the time or the place. Uh, so I think we all can probably agree they're going to do something. It's not just Skyward Sword HD and then talking about a Breath of the Wild trailer later this year, which they kind of hinted they were going to do. They're, they're going right. to obviously have something. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, Zelda's more popular than it's ever been. If there's ever, I mean, they, guys, they've done Symphony of the Goddess tours like twice. They've celebrated every five years since the 20th anniversary, releasing multiple Zelda games. Grezzo themselves working on like two games per anniversary, practically. Um, so... This gets into what do we think is actually going to happen for the 35th? There, there's been a, some rumors floating out there, uh, some speculation. Game over Jesse at the center of some of those rumors. Um, <laughs> but uh, at, let, let's start with Game over Jesse. What do you think is actually going to happen for the 35th anniversary besides the obvious Skyward Sword HD and potential dropping of Breath of the Wild 2 at yeah. some point? Um, okay, so I. <sighs> Let's see. So we have uh, Skyward Sword HD, Age of Calamity DLC, and at least information that we can allow to. forward to Breath of the Wild too. Yeah. Yeah. And at then the, uh, they said the we're going to hear about it. That that's all they promised so far. Yeah. So, um, aside from that, uh, that takes care of like uh, Koei Tecmo, Nintendo, um, Tantalus. And yeah, so that leaves like Grezzo, who, as you mentioned, uh, for the 25th anniversary, they, well, since they began, they have been working nonstop on at least one Zelda game. Uh, Sometimes they even have two Zelda games in development. And during uh, the 25th anniversary and leading up to the 30th anniversary, they actually released two Zelda games and then immediately began production on a third Zelda game. And uh, if they follow that pattern, then that gives at least two games to expect from them, uh, since they already worked on Ocarina of Time 3D and Majora's Mask 3D. And they are also, uh, aside from Zelda games, they are known to really quickly be able to port their 3DS titles to the Switch or even the PlayStation 4. And since they already have all the assets and stuff, and their experience with Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, I think those games could easily come to Switch at a later date. What's also notable um, is Grezzo is the company who ported 3DS game Metopia over. So they've yes. already HD'd a 3DS game. Yes. So um, it's notable. So there was a, a bunch of people that had been wondering, since they worked on Metopia, does that mean that they couldn't have been working on any Zelda ports or remakes? And no, because they usually have two or three different games in development at the same time. And Metopia is a really, really small game. And since they made the original and all they had to do was port this, then that gives plenty of time for them to have been working on something already. And a lot of people uh, are hoping for, what is it? The Oracle remakes. Oh. Mm, that'd be but, wild. Yeah. Um, but I, I think Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask is the, the more obvious thing to come because even if they did reuse the Link's Awakening engine, they would still have to rebuild or create all of the dungeons, the story, the boss fights, and everything for the both Oracle games. Whereas with Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, they already have everything basically ready. They just sure. need to put it on Switch and yeah. People, what people uh, realize is a lot of the 3DS games um, 
almost all the assets in those games are created in HD and then downsampled yeah. for the 3DS screen to make the image file smaller. Like when art designers go out there and they're making like models, they're not making models in 480p. Like right. The the, the models are way more detailed. Like you, we've seen on emulators, these games run in HD and like there's more detail in those models than you can see. Uh, on the 3ds screen and that's because those models weren't made at that resolution so while some people obviously would love to see like a real remake of working your time because we've seen some of those unreal engine 4 recreations by fans um and some people to be fair i want to be clear here some people don't actually like the 3ds remakes especially majora's mask they made some fundamental changes in that that really Mm. I would say if they brought them over, specifically the boss fights, they'd have to, I would say, revert to the older mechanics, you know, of like having the boss fights not have like the giant eyeball on them to make it easier for the DS players, you know, like revert certain things, but keep the overall. And like the Zora swimming in Majora's Mask, I don't know what they were doing in that 3D version. That's that's legitimately worse. I don't know what they were thinking. Yeah. And yeah. you mentioned earlier, uh, well, actually, we kind of all touched on it, just the business decisions from Nintendo and charging the $60 price. Since they are known for uh, what would likely be the better business decision and not decision for the fans, I think that's also a big reason as to why we would expect Ocarina of Time, because they already have all the assets and they're experienced with the game and porting 3DS games to Switch really quickly. And it's a big Even game, if- too. Even if yeah. it's just Ocarina of Time by itself, um, that alone being ported to the Switch would take less than half the time it would take to make one of the Oracle games because they would actually have to create and build everything right. for one of the Oracle ports or one of the Oracle remakes. And then after they finish it, Ocarina of Time by itself, I think, um, this is just my opinion, but I think for $60, Ocarina of Time HD alone would sell more than twice as many copies as a bundle for both Oracle games in HD at $60. Oh, no, yeah. no doubt. Sure. Yeah. So the business decision is why wouldn't they create the game that they can finish really quickly with a small team and make two to four times as much money as the Oracle games. So and then I got. use that money to fund the Oracle games since it would be a longer development time. So let's presume, okay, that they're bringing at least Ocarina of Time 3D over, if not that and Majora's Mask. How does the release slate work with the um basically there's been two major uh journalists essentially come out and say look the wind waker hd and twilight princess hd are coming later this year they're, they're just coming we're just straight up telling you it. it's not even going to be a surprise they're coming <laughs> okay so you get skyward sword hd you get those games which they could bundle together but as we see with skyward sword hd that would just devalue skyward sword hd even that much more make more controversy so probably going to end up releasing them on their own uh, and then you have Ocarina of Time. Like you're starting to get to the point where that's like four or five, you know, new, you know, re-releasing of old games. Uh, whereas, yes, you could argue because there was four, what, four games for the Mario anniversary because of the three pack with 3D All Stars and then 3D World. Uh, and well, you could technically, argue, Paper Mario was, was uh, a new game. A, it was planned to be part of the anniversary, but it yep. leaked, so they just went ahead and announced too. it early. And they also had no, I didn't the, know that. the weird Game & Watch uh, thing. And then the Mario 35 yep. and the, the crazy, bizarre, but amazing uh, Mario Kart. Um, home. Live. Yeah, Home, home, circuit, home yeah. Live. Yeah, that thing. So like they, they had that's all a lot of new things. compared to and, old. Yeah. And similarly with Zelda, I think that it's not just going to be this year that we could see like if those rumors are true and Wind Waker and Twilight Princess does re- like if the big Zelda summer game is uh, Skyward Sword HD and then Wind Waker and Twilight Princess come out towards the end of the year, just as uh, 3D World and Bowser's Fury came out the year after the announcement, I think the 35th anniversary for Zelda could also easily carry over into the next year. Oh, for sure. I would be surprised if we saw Breath of the Wild by the end of this year. Breath of the Wild 2. I, I think there were there was rumors think, out there that that got delayed yeah. 
to early 2022, which I don't think is mm-hmm. the worst thing in the world, depending on how they no. ha- have games already lined up anyways. It potentially, be right. like, look, yeah, it gets pushed into early 2022, but, I mean, if you end your celebration, like, let's just say they're planning to run it through March 31st of next year, like they did with Mario. Okay, well, mm-hmm. then, literally, I mean, if you really want to be special, you could launch it on March 3rd. And it'd be the fifth five year anniversary of Breath of the Wild. Exactly. That's exactly what I was hoping for. If they wanted to aim for a date that had significance, that would also make sense for their fiscal year. Throw it on the anniversary of the first Breath of the Wild. Yeah, and that that's kind of the window that I was March, and that'd be an awesome right. end of the fiscal year for them. Yeah, right. That, that could yeah, be what people are feeling nostalgic. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I, I think also though the pull of obviously like a Zelda Collector's Edition again. You know, the last one we saw really was back on the GameCube and that today is still like one of my most treasured items because it was limited. Um, and the fact of when you look back, you can only get it for a certain amount of time and in a certain, in a certain manner, you know, there are very few ways that you could get it. And that is still, you know, that is still prized among many as, as a very, you know, rare find. And if you can find that, like snag it up. Mm. Um, I, I think that it's, I don't know what all they throw on a collection. I would like to think that they do a collection towards the end of the year. And that would probably be more towards the the holiday experience but i mean it's it's a good year to be a returning zelda fan it's a good year to be a new zelda fan um and it's a good year for nintendo for sure in the sense that they know that there are a lot of new eyes and new appetites for people to experience more of this this series but also looking forward to and kind of being driven by that hype for breath of the wild 2 to where you have all this space in between and it's like oh more zelda stuff you know this isn't what i really was waiting for which was breath of the wild 2 but now I'm really excited, so I'm going to buy it anyway. And believe it or not, that's a huge marketing strategy <laughs> that many brands will use. And I, I think a lot of people don't look at it from that element. Um, but if you go to school, obviously, for like marketing and stuff like that, you tend to whet the appetite and then keep the psyche on it. And then you feed things in between and it works very, very well. So, I mean, it's 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 exciting. But yeah, um, as far as what they do specifically, if they do bring the 3Ds over... Um, even if they brought, I, I know some of the Spawncast guys were talking about it last week. They'd love just having like the handhelds on Nintendo Switch Online, oh. you know, bringing some of those over. Uh, there, there are tons of different things they could do. Again, it just comes down to what will they actually put the effort into doing just I, yet. I also think it comes down to release slate. So, sure. set, setting aside Zelda, like Nintendo has almost a major game now every month heading up to Skyward Sword in July, um, whether it's from them or from a third party like Monster Hunter Rise next month. Uh, Brave the Default 2, I guess you would say, is the big one this month, although Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury was really the big one uh, mm-hmm. for Nintendo anyway. So I think it comes down to release slate as well because you can't ignore that we're technically still in a little bit of a pandemic right now. I know hopefully by the end of this year it's we're finally moving on, but we'll see. Uh, so there is always a thought process that a lot of new games from Nintendo might be like not even ready to go this year. Um, mm-hmm. which is why Breath of the Wild 2 delayed. Why the only like new new game we got announced besides another Mario sports game was Splatoon 3, which they said isn't coming till next year. Uh, right. So it makes me wonder if they might be re- really relying on like the 35th anniversary of Zelda, 25th anniversary of Pokemon. Um, maybe I mean I. Let's, look, Nintendo doesn't really celebrate Metroid the way that it should be celebrated. Oh, like I agree. A, a Prime Trilogy HD or something <laughs> like that's or a 2D. I don't like just get something out the door for Metro. Like pretend it actually exists for at least a single release. I feel like they don't want to make the same mistake they made with Bayonetta. You know, Bayonetta three was teased, and then we had one and two kind of you know launch to hype that up, and then it's been for we haven't heard anything about Bayonetta three. So yeah. I, I development's when, going well. What are you talking about? Yeah, I think I think when Prime four is uh you know closer to release that's when we'll see metroid prime and if we don't hear news about four we'll see the prime trilogy and then we'll know four is coming along swimmingly um but yeah i don't i don't know i think if it wasn't like a huge deal still they wouldn't still have you know before every live direct if you watch it live they do have that that covid19 disclaimer Mm -hmm. and i I think they wouldn't put such a focus on that still if it was if it hadn't affected their games Mm -hmm. um you know, and that, I think sure. that's why, you know, I, I still feel bad that Ayanuma san has to apologize. Uh, you know, like, sorry, no Breath of Wild news sorry, right now. I, you're seeing because... me and I know what you want. I just can't give it to you yet. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, you know, and, and I, I knew as soon as he stood up there, it wasn't going to be Breath of the Wild. But I know for many people, oh, their I, I think when they show there. it, they're just going to show it and then he'll be on screen. 
I don't I don't think mm-hmm. he's gonna like introduce it. You know, like he I, I know some people be like, Oh well back in twenty fourteen, yeah, when he snapped and Breath of the Wild appeared on screen. It was a this shocker moment. Though. We already know this game exists. No, but the Breath of the Wild trailer, trailer, yeah, they snuck that in. Yeah. Like, like no, I agree. we've already seen, you know. This right. isn't like the Twilight Princess reveal that no one expected back in two thousand six. This isn't the right. what didn't even know Breath of the Wild existed when he snapped it on screen. Like we know mm-hmm. about this game. We've already seen a trailer. We don't need a yes. preamble before you show it off. Yes, um, I agree. So I, I think it's just going to be shown, and then then he'll appear on screen and talk about, you know, why we haven't shown it so far. What are you know mm-hmm. when we're planning to release? Maybe, you know, whatever else he wants to talk about. And I, I think the reason we didn't see it here uh, isn't because I actually personally think that they probably are ready to show it again. Because they showed a trailer back in 2019, and I know we had the pandemic in between, but I kind of feel like Breath of the Wild 2 isn't in the same sort of development hell other games might be that are new. Right. Because they already have the engine, they already have the, the visuals. Yeah, they still have to make new stuff. But for the most part, That's I mean... They had a lot in it. <laughs> yeah, and, and they said they were working on this game since 2017, yeah. so it's not like they started in 2019. So I feel like they have and something to show, but thing. they... Hmm? Sorry. Oh, I was okay. going to say another, another big thing is that they stated that the uh, DLC for Breath of the Wild began as concepts and ideas they already had for Breath of the Wild that just didn't make it into the yeah, final they're, they're game. finishing up. And then, yeah, and then Breath of the Wild 2 began the exact same way as DLC, but they had too many ideas and too many concepts to put into DLC, so they decided to build uh, the new game around it. Darn. So all of, uh, oh, no. at least <laughs> most of the ideas and planning and stuff seems like it would have already been done since it all began as concepts for the original or like bare, DLC bare for the original though. anyways. They started and, at the end of 2017 yeah, or early 2018. Like, uh, there's always that infamous uh, image that people show of uh, Ganondorf standing on top of the floating island. And then the very first trailer we see of Breath of the Wild 2 is Hyrule Castle uh, kind of floating up into the air. And then there's the concept art of Link's hand uh, doing the weird robot thing. And then in the trailer, it's Link's hand doing a weird spirit thing. So it's kind of swapped you there. Know, you know what I love about that about that trailer? Nintendo was very careful. So you talk about how the castle is about to fly up in the air or whatever. We don't technically know if it's going to. It could also be sinking. They don't right. really. He like yeah. they. I think we presume because we know that Skyloft and stuff is like up there somewhere that like that's where it's going. But also like they were very careful to stop it just before you could one hundred percent tell for sure. Yep. Uh, which direction it was heading it's kind of it's kind of interesting um nintendo's mm-hmm. very they, they do that by the way they want you to speculate that's yeah they know I the zelda that. fans are going to dissect every single frame so. right yeah <laughs> no, I, I feel like it's a common trend where trailers nowadays in media give too much away oh. and you're like i feel like i just watched the movie or i just like watched the premise of the show already like do i really want to watch it now and i feel like with zelda they did a really good job of teasing things that's the way i felt with Xenoblade yeah. chronicles 2 mm-hmm. I felt like they were yeah. just showing too much of that game before it came out. You feel like it was over-teased? Yeah. It was over-teased. Yeah. Like, I remember yeah. Eric and I oh. reacting to it back, like, way back when, when they were showing it, like, okay, we've seen, in, like, one of the directs, or it was an E3 thing, I can't remember, yeah. okay, so we've yeah. seen 15 minutes of it, and we're going another 10 minutes further. What are you doing? I don't need to know any more about this yeah. game. And it's not because I want to see what's next, it's because this is, like, too much about one game. Like, I don't need, mm-hmm. like, yeah. If I'm a Zelda guy, I'm not going to complain about 25 minutes of Zelda. But when they do that, it's because it's a demo. Mm-hmm. That, like, they're not even talking about a demo. You're just, more story. And here's more story. And here's more right. story. And it's like, well, can it, we play the game and find some right. of stuff out? Do we need to know everything But to right a now? certain extent, though, too, it may not have been that it was overshared. It was just too much at once. Understandable. It, it, it You're just... You're just punching you in the face with the knowledge and here's more here's more here you haven't had time to digest this but yeah, here's here, more here, here's all these new systems and then here's this and here's that and it's like okay okay can like we slow down for a moment here i bought the game i'm happy in general with xenoblade chronicles 2 few things i'm not a fan of but whatever it happens with every game mm-hmm. but it's like they don't really do that with zelda as much i feel like and maybe it's i'm just biased because i like zelda so much so it's hard for me to get overloaded but also, like, I think about how they handled Breath of the Wild. Like, okay, they had the tease in 2014, which just showed the overworld. 
for a moment, uh, and then you're running away from a guardian. And then they had uh, the first gameplay reveal as an off-camera weird thing at the Game Awards. That, and then they, we didn't see it again at all until E3 2016 when we just saw the opening area of the game. Um, yeah. And yeah, they talked a hell of a long time about that and about, oh, it's open. Oh, you can go to the end right away after you're off this place if you want. But they, that was it. Like, you just, here's the beginning of the game. That's great. But guess what? You have no idea what the hell happens once you get off this place. So. Yep. And then the trailer of, uh, what was it, January 2017 oh. with uh, <laughs> more story heavy and all the voice acting reveal. And and like, boy, the voice acting. The music. Oh, oh yeah. boy. Yeah. 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 yeah they really, um, it's like they really spread it out instead of giving you too much. Like, look, here's the beginning of the game. But, like, technically, we're not showing you everything from the beginning sure. of the game either. We're yeah. not showing you the voice acting. You're just. Well, that's that's the genius of. Breath of the Wild is that you can let people play for an hour, two hours, three hours, that whole entire beginning area, and they'll still not really know any of the story or what's going on other than, oh, I can cook and climb trees. Yeah, especially since right. the demo at, at 2016 didn't let you like see the end. Even if you were, even if you beat all four shrines, it wouldn't let you actually see the ending cutscene at, at E3. So you didn't know that you were actually like talking to the king. The king. You mm. weren't right. sure. You're like, is this just like the old man, oh, man. from the first Zelda game? Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. even though he uh, looks like King Roan from like when we like, is he? I don't, I don't know. I'm not really sure. Oh, and of course you're not going to tell us even if we get that far in the demo in the limited time. All right. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, going back to uh, Breath of the Wild two and uh, Breath of the Wild's uh, delayed development and everything. The main reasons they stated that Breath of the Wild was delayed so many times was because they were having issues perfecting the physics engine in the game, which uh, they uh, made the joke that uh, in the game, like you can knock down a tree or something and you can hit it and it'll like roll or you can move it and it'll roll or you can hit it and it'll turn into like the sticks of wood and stuff. Mm. Or you can hit a rock and make it shoot through the air but they would have issues where they would fix one thing and get it working perfect, but then that would cause like a giant boulder to where the wind could barely blow and then it would send the boulder flying halfway across the map. <laughs> so they would have a lot of issues trying to fix and tweak that and then have it still work with the puzzles that they had. And then obviously the other thing was, uh, although they had interviews where they stated uh, developing it for Switch didn't cause any delays. They also had interviews stating that it did. And obviously it was released alongside the Switch. And if it wasn't rushed to release alongside the Switch, then you would have to assume that it was done and just being uh, I feel meticulously like the game like, was probably ready and to stuff. go at the original intended release at the end of 2015. No, no, no. I don't think that at all. I, well, I think because, like well, maybe it would have. So in one of the interviews that uh, uh, I think it was when Grezzo got in, or no, the team from Monolith Soft that came in, they brought him in to help port the game, uh, the Switch. They, there was some sort of interview where they mentioned that, hey, we've been working on the Switch port since the beginning of 2016. And if they were working on porting it at that time, to me, it kind of suggests, well, the game must be almost done if you're just focusing on porting at that point and then getting a demo ready for E3. Now, granted, that was for the Wii U, but it, it makes me wonder, like, I, they, the thing is, we, I don't know if we ever really get the truth on everything because, um, especially when it comes to the game delays, they don't want you to think there's trouble in development. They don't want you to right. think... Uh, anything negative about a game when it's delayed. It scares the dusters, too, mm -hmm. so... But, uh, yeah. but it's kind of like, I kind of liken it to Twilight Princess. We heard that there was all these issues with Twilight Princess and why it got delayed. And then it turns out it was a launch game for Wii. They decided to make it a launch game for Wii. So, and the same thing basically happened with this game, where I wonder if it really was actually on target. And they just said, uh, have you not seen that nothing is selling on Wii U? We yeah. can't take the game we spent the most money on in Skyward Sword this again. We need mm -hmm. to do something on a new platform and hope it helps launch that new platform the way Twilight Princess did with Wii. And so I even wonder after... like, how much of that last year was like, hey, you know what? Um, it doesn't matter that the game's ready because we are not releasing this on Wii U without it going to Switch at the same time. Yeah. Um, and we'll never know. We'll never know. If, if we relate uh, that whole Breath of the Wild thing to uh, Breath of the Wild 2's development, it's... Uh, 
I think it'll be entering its fourth or fifth year of development. If it goes into 2022, yeah, it'll be like almost five years. Yeah. And the original... We think about the, older the, games. Yeah. The, the original took five and a half years yes. um, to release. And that's with trouble development, developing it on two consoles. Uh, they said that they completely changed the story around because they released that first uh, quick trailer of the Guardian chasing Link on Epona. Mm -hmm. And they, the overwhelmingly positive fan reaction to the the Guardian and the interest the fans had in the Guardian made them uh, take the Guardian from just a typical normal enemy and have the story more heavily revolve, revolve around, around them. it. Yeah. And I think that's why we never seen the Sheikah Slate appear until Twilight Princess HD was announced. Um, I think it was in that same trailer because you get to see uh, Link I'm on Epona sure for like Sheikah two or Slate three seconds. in December of that same year in the off-screen off gameplay. Because they used it, they lifted it up and they marked, a, marked the map, they marked the tower in the background and ran to it. It was a Wii U specific feature. The Sheikah Slate was supposed to be the Wii U tablet, and they showed that off no. in December of 2014. Mm. I was meaning like on his uh, on the character model, um, mm. you can see the Sheikah Slate like flapping or whatever and hitting oh, the back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that I, I, I that part. I don't remember. I'd have to go back and watch that 2014 um, footage. Because I remember I made a video about it, uh, speculating that I thought it was the Book of Medora because... Oh, I remember, I remember that video. Previously, before Breath of the Wild, they had Skyward Sword, where Zelda's father had the big book in the artwork that had the Sheikah mm. symbol on it. And then, for some reason, in Ocarina of Time 3D... I, I, I know why you made they that added, video. Yeah, they added in a bunch of random Book of Medora lookalikes all over the place. Like you could go to the random Sheikah house or Lon Lon Ranch, and they would just be like the green book with the Sheikah symbol. So it's it was kind of odd to see it suddenly appear with Link, but I would have never guessed it was a tablet. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, my my guess at the time was that it was a book. So hmm. I think I think hearing all of it though, like the more we talk about you know the fact of of it getting delayed to be a Switch title as well as a dual release with the Wii U. I mean, I would like to see how Breath of the Wild 2 can improve the fact that it's made just for the Switch's hardware. Like, yes, the Switch mm -hmm. isn't the most powerful console out there, but also because you're taking sacrifices, the fact that it's a hybrid console, I think it's really exciting to see how they're going to tailor things more towards the Switch and how much more beautiful the game could end up running on it. Because, um, you know, I'll, I'll say for a fact, I love Splatoon and it is one of the most beautiful games on the Switch. It runs at a smooth 60. It's a shooter. There's lots of things going on on that game and it is just an absolute blast to play. If Breath of the Wild can be tailored any more towards, like Splatoon 2 was tailored towards the Switch versus the Wii U performance of Splatoon 1, I think that, you know, we're going to see some really, really interesting elements. And then also, you know, whether or not we're going to get the open world, or are we not? Are we getting more traditional dungeons? Are we getting a mix? Like, is it going to be more linear? Is it more story intensive? All on the performance of how the Switch is made to run it. Like, I just, I, I get giddy thinking about it. Hmm. Yeah. And that's an interesting thing uh, as well with, because we even seen when Breath of the Wild originally released on the Switch, it did have uh, some issues with frame drops and stuff. Yes. And then after a couple of patches, it slightly improved. Mm -hmm. But um, it would be interesting to see, like if they put all their focus on that instead of working on the DLC and the sequel, um, how good they could have gotten it to run. So seeing all of their attention focused on just getting it to run for the Switch uh, would be interesting to see. Hopefully better than Age of Calamity because <laughs> that game is rough every now and then. <laughs> so also what's interesting, just noting the development of, of this game. So Age of Calamity, unlike the first Hyrule Warriors, was one, Eiji Nomu and the Zelda team's idea. They approached Koei Tecmo. Uh, two, part of the Breath of the Wild team actually helped with that game. And I don't think, and, th and this was during a pandemic, so I don't think that they would have helped with that game if development of Breath of the Wild 2 wasn't going smoothly. Like, for them to be like, hey, look, we know we're not releasing it this year. We know that people have interest in what happened 100 years ago or whatever. Let's, let's, let's just 
go to them and help them out and get a good game out, and then we'll just, you know, get back to Breath of the Wild. I, I don't think, like, Breath of the Wild development was delayed to help out with that, which tells me that things were going fine with this game this whole time. I agree. And mm-hmm. they're literally just waiting for the right release moment to really get it out there and maximize sales, and which is brought up that speculation about are they tying Switch Pro, if that exists, into it as, like, a, hey, we need a time to release this correctly, and if we do that with the next Zelda game, and, like, there's a special Zelda Edition Switch, but it's a Switch Pro that's special. Like, how is that going to really boost Nintendo for the next, you know, remember, three, four years? According right. to Kurokawa, we're just entering the midway point of Switch. With that, I will say... Nintendo are also the same people that said that the 3DS was already perfect and an XL model would not be releasing. This is actually <laughs> Miyamoto in an interview. And then yep. like literally a month later, they announced the XL. They said the 3DS uh, was not going to be uh, dying or ending production. They said the same thing about the Wii U. They said the Switch was going to be a third pillar to be supported alongside the Wii U, but then every Wii U game ended up just coming to Switch, which kind of canceled it out. And it was the same thing they also said about the DS taking over for the GBA. And uh, they also, uh, Miss Click mentioned earlier how they said that uh, traditional controls or whatever were changing the motion controls in Skyward Sword would be almost impossible which we knew from the beginning it wasn't because the same thing they're doing where you can move uh, the right stick to swing the sword. You can literally, well, yeah, that, but also on the Dolphin emulator, you can play the game right now on an Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller with that exact same configuration. There's a few uh, live streams where I'm literally playing doing that exact same thing. So whenever they announced it like that, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if... I wonder if they uh, got a hold of Dolphin or something and seen how they were figuring it out for the casual players that didn't want to use motion control. Uh, so there, there's all these things. And even uh, something as simple as Majora's Mask uh, 3D, they kept on saying they had no intentions or they weren't working on it or whatever, that it was just a rumor. And then they ended up announcing it. And when they announced it, they said they had been working on it since Ocarina of Time had released. Yeah, they so knew the whole time. Yep. Yeah, and there was the the big rumor for uh, they weren't going to be moving towards or have they didn't have any interest in mobile smartphone games. And then they ended up <laughs> purchasing a, an entire portion of a company just to work on mobile games. And that was a, a huge uh, strategy they had to boost their financials because of the losses on the wii u what is basically so there's all these nintendo lies a lot yes because they don't that, want you to know what they're doing that that is like it's 10 smart. different examples of nintendo yeah. uh denying something or saying one thing just to get yeah. you to not focus on it and the reason that I'll i always say remember is, miyamoto with the 3ds thing literally asked directly in a video interview and he says <laughs> No, we are not releasing new 3DS hardware. One month <laughs> yeah. later. Hey, welcome to Ooh. the new 3DS. And it's it's not necessarily that they're lying, which is what a lot of oh, people God. are like, well, why would yeah. Nintendo lie to us? And it's like, no, they, there's a reason they pay their it's marketing like team millions of dollars. Like are you upset that you're actually getting something new? Like, are you upset? Yeah. Like, right. really? They're, like, they're well, not going to. Like, Furukawa is not even denying straight up that a Switch Pro exists. He just says, we have nothing to announce soon. Yeah. Well, that's not Reggie, the same as we have nothing to announce. Before He's not Reggie even saying, left, hey, we don't have it. He did the same thing. Yeah. Where Reggie in an interview was like, uh, he was asked about a second Switch model, and he said, or he was asked about a Switch Pro and a Switch uh, Lite or whatever they were Switch Mini, whatever it's supposed to be called at the time, the rumor, and he was like, we're only focused on the current Nintendo Switch model at this time, which was like, what do you mean current? You just kind <laughs> of. Yeah, and, Re- there, well, and before the Switch even came out, they were calling like the Switch a family of systems when there was only right. one system. And it's like, clearly Switch family implies there's going to be more. Yeah, and, more and you had and more. all of those people uh, saying that Nintendo would never release a handheld-only Switch because it completely defeats the purpose of having... <laughs> we had that same uh, conversation. Yeah. That and it's yep. like, yeah. it's like they, they literally... it's. <laughs> like come on I didn't say they'll that do they, whatever they I remember think. saying that I didn't think they wouldn't 
saying they wouldn't do it because I mean they did a 3ds without 3d with 2ds. So like yeah, yeah, they'll do it. I just don't have an interest in it. Mm-hmm. I I I, mean, I, I, I like playing a- on TVs. I also like playing on the go. I don't need a system for just on the go. That was the whole point of the switches. I don't need no, right. I don't need two systems anymore. I can just have one. Um, I mean, I'd I'd also be willing to give up the hybrid though if we just had a more powerful console that just sat at home. You well, know? Yeah. I'd be fine with that. Yeah, I know. So would I, to be honest. I thought, like, so I enjoyed the Switch concept at first because I'm a parent. I got three kids. It's sure. really nice to, like, I don't always have the TV. Let's just be honest. Mm-hmm. It's just when you have children, you probably don't have the TV a majority of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and you want to play games. And that's what I, I actually, that was a big thing with Wii U. I had one kid back then on Wii U, and I'm like, this is great. Off TV play. Besides the fact that not every game supported it, and it was kind of... You had to be within oh, six feet of the yeah. system, but right. whatever, it worked enough. <laughs> I, I remember hooking the. I remember uh, moving the Wii U to a certain position in the kitchen, so when I wanted to get away from the kids, I can go into the bathroom and play it, just because of the <laughs> off TV play. So like when Switch came along, I was like, "This is awesome," and I did. I played a lot of handheld in the early days of Switch, and now I'm almost exclusively playing docked, except like. When you go on, like when Eric and I will go to E3 or something, okay, well, yeah, I'm playing handled on the plane or whatever, but I'm not in, as an adult, I'm not in those situations as often. And maybe it's just because I don't like work a job where I need to take public transportation. Like when you have a job around here, you drive to it. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're small, small town. It's, so, like, you're not, there's you're not going to get public. to play it on a train. You're not going to get to play it on a bus. You're, driving yourself so like you could play it on break at work but then you know it's maybe something else is going on like you know wanting to eat lunch <laughs> so, like it, it gets to the point where um as an adult i'm really not using the handheld as much and now i got multiple tvs in my room so i can be like hey kids go to go to this room watch tv i'm gonna play switch in here or whatever um now i mean i, I know guys i have a unique situation because i have a home studio which Everything in here is just for me, and now I got two TVs in here because the podcast set is on. Yeah. So, in eh, worst case scenario, I just plug into the whole podcast set and then yeah. play on there. But it, it's, I just think that Switch is at a point where it doesn't matter what they release, it's going to sell. Um, sure. Whether it's a standalone system that's more powerful, which some people want, whether it's a more powerful Switch, uh, whether it's just a sleeker Switch, like if you think of like the Game Boy Advance SP. Wasn't really more powerful, but backlit screen and it clamshell looked cool. Mm-hmm. Looked cool. Needed to get it. You know, they released yep. a switch it that's flipped. like like slightly better battery life, but no bezel, and they fixed the Joy Cons. Boom! It's gonna sell, even if they don't really do much with the power. Now I know all the reports out there, and supposed people are talking about how it's gonna have DLSS, which means it has to have a better GPU. That's great, and we'll see. Maybe that's for a Switch 2. I don't know. I don't know what Nintendo has cooking. Um, I just know something's going to come because something always comes around this time in a hardware cycle. Even, guys, think back to the Wii. Remember how popular the Wii was? We got the Wii Mini. We did. Granted, it's a really crappy system and no one should buy it. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it looked cool. It was like red and black. It was kind of cool looking, but it, that's about it. It was just like a showpiece. Good for kids. They remember yeah. it was supposed yeah. to be a, oh, use it at cabins where you don't have internet. Okay, but it's like more expensive than the version with internet. So why are we? <laughs> All yeah. right, that's that's. That was a marketing flaw. Yeah. yeah. For sure. <laughs> um, all right, so let's let's kind of transition into like the, towards the end of the podcast here. I want to. We, we've talked a lot about obviously Skyward Sword HD and then all the things that we think possibly could happen and things we want to happen uh, for the 35th anniversary. We didn't get too much into merch or custom systems, obviously. Bring us all the merch. Bring us all the custom systems. We'll buy what we right. want. We won't buy what we want. That happens all the time. Yes, sir? Let me just throw out something here. Do you think for a collection, they would do Oracles plus Triforce? Just just Triforce as zeros. a... Yeah. Just as a collection for... It, bring out the other games individually, but then as their collection, no. Oracles and Triforce? I don't think so. No? I think it sounds horrible. I don't know if they'd want to taint Oracles with heroes attached. Yeah, Triforce Heroes. <laughs> like, I, I really yeah. enjoy Triforce Heroes. I, I know a lot of people do, but again, well, it's like I, Skyward Sword and gets a lot friends. of hate. I played it with friends. So like, yeah. when you play it with p- random people online, I'll admit it's not that good because people are just trolling the whole time and throwing people off cliffs. And right. Just being dicks. So like, it really ruins the chance to have fun. Uh, but it's actually a lot of fun. It's just like it reminded me of playing Four Sword Adventures back in the day when you actually had people mm-hmm. to play with. It was a lot of fun. 
Uh, but <laughs> unfortunately, I realized most people weren't in that situation to maximize their fun with it. So sure. I don't think well, Triforce Heroes is kind of a not a good rep. Like Skyward Sword has a bad reputation through people not really giving it a fair chance and because of a control right. scheme that they could technically fix. Um, right. Triforce Heroes is multiplayer Zelda. It's going to be multiplayer Zelda. You're not really going to... Yes. I mean, you could play it single player, but you want to play it multiplayer. I I don't think there's a... like I, Personally, if they do a collection like that, it's the Oracle games and the Minish Cap, because those are the three games right. that they oh. made. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But again, they have to remake all three of those games for Switch. Yes. It'd be a, it'd be a task. That's a monumental task. I don't see that. It'd be great. I would I would buy it up in a heartbeat. But I, I think... mean, well, and one thing we are kind of ignoring. So for Mario's anniversary, like in six months, they threw together a bunch of emulation the, HD ports. It's possible they about... could just do that again. Yes, or they do the ninety nine kind of um, like Battle Royale, Tetris ninety nine, Mario oh, thirty fifth. That they did. They could do something like that with I've Zelda been as well. A Zelda Dungeon, dungeon Runner. Ever since Mario 35 mm-hmm. came out, I've been wanting yep. a Zelda Dungeon Runner 35 so bad. Yep. That'd and be like really Donkey cool. Donkey Kong's 40th is this year. Oh my God, is that game not built for that kind of gameplay? Donkey Kong? Yeah. Holy That's crud, true. dude. OG DK, yeah. 40 players. It would be awesome. That's like, we were doing this in the arcades back in the day. Let's go. But mm-hmm. who, who really knows? I think I think between all the anniversaries, besides Pokemon, who has the Pokemon company that does their own thing, and Zelda, that's clearly going to get the attention. I almost think DK has a better chance of being celebrated than Mario, just because DK was like the beginning of Nintendo really getting deep into gaming. Um, and we'll see. But we'll see. I mean, DK games are also not super popular anymore, so right. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah. Sorry, right, I just I wanted wanna... to throw that out. There. No, it's okay, man. No, um, it was, yeah, it was good. What What I want to kind of end with is. Obviously, for each one of us, Zelda means something. It represents something to us. It, it, it's passionate. We're here on this podcast literally talking nothing but Zelda for this week because it is that big of an IP for multiple different reasons for, for us. So I'm going to start with Eric because I think um, he's mostly experienced Zelda through me playing it. And then, obviously, I'll never forget your reaction to the demo at E3. <laughs> um, I've never seen Eric play a game and be that joyful since Mario 64. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. And we played the hell out of that demo at E3 because that's all we yes, were there. We we're working, I was at, there at Zelda Informer. He was there to support me. And we were, we literally, for three straight days, just kept getting back in the demo line. Oh, yeah. God, I got so many Breath of the Wild t shirts, so many coins. Well, oh, yeah. Sour points. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't remind me of the coins. On the coins. But I Whoa. have a bunch of co- like I've got so much. Okay, so. I'm going to start with you, Eric. Yeah. What does the Zelda series mean to you as someone who has mostly experienced it through me, but then also Breath of the Wild? Because you know how much it obviously means to me. Yeah, no, for sure. It's To me, it's all nostalgia because, again, I didn't play it. It's a symbol basically of our friendship for, to a certain extent because a lot of our time spent as young children, we were in your room. I was watching you play Zelda. I mean, uh. that was pretty much our childhood. So was my girlfriend at the time. Do I make yeah. one watch? Yeah, you did. Zelda? You did. And parents walked <laughs> converted playing Zelda. Yeah, obviously. No yeah. And uh obviously me being your color guy. Oh, the color guy. Back, oh, God. back in the day. I would go H- through uh, you maybe you don't know. Back in the 90s, HTML websites. This is like before PHP and CSS existed. So you oh, wanted yeah. to change a color on a, on a on a website, you had to do it on every page on the website. Uh-huh. So I got so <laughs> bored of it. I was like, "Eric, I'm not going to pay you. You want to do this for me? Thanks. Be my color guy. I'm going to yeah. I'm going to work on walkthroughs. Hey, walkthroughs are tedious too." Yeah. But like, yeah, it's a little more fun cuz I get to play a game and Yeah, well, I, I actually <laughs> enjoyed it. So it I didn't, yeah, it didn't it bother weird. me. And here we are yeah. both like at the ages right now and both technically able to program something. Yeah, so. right? <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, but no, honestly, it it's a symbol of our friendship, our young days, and then Breath of the Wild just kind of carried that through till now and, you know, helped go into the future and, uh, you know, it's it's part of the reason why I'm here, well, to be completely honest. I'll g- give you an example. So Skyward Sword is G, you're not sure. Breath of the Wild 2. Oh, one hundred percent. I mean, not even a question. Yeah, no, not even a doubt. That that's no, yeah, mean. for sure. Um, and it's it's you are nothing, converted. Yeah, nothing, nothing against Skyward I Sword. Him. It only but, took thirty plus years, but I not, converted you finally. Nothing against uh, Skyward Sword, but you know, it's one of those things that Breath of the Wild was I don't just. Think you ever watched me play Skyward Sword? No, that, that no, was that your was college days. Yep. So. Um, but uh, no, for sure, it was 
it's one of those things that Breath of the Wild is just so different yet so similar yet it it's it just amazing. familiar but yes. feels new yes and There's a magic to it. yes and so you know going forward with Breath of the Wild 2 and things like that it's just you know it gives us it gives me something forward you know to look forward to not that we don't have other things in common obviously Sports. we've been friends for Sports. forever but uh you know it it, it helps you know it, it helps with this i mean part of the reason why we're here is because of zelda I, one thing i'll remember when we were kids so zelda obviously was mostly just no, i ain't handing over the controller everyone's watching me play for yeah. about it um I don't care. Oh, you'll make out with me if you get to play Wind Waker? That's cool. You can make out with me while I play Wind Waker. I'm not me, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not Eric. I'm, I'm going to throw, throw that out the there. I'm I, like, mean... I am not handing over this controller. I love these games so much. <laughs> but uh, I was a little bit selfish with my Zelda play- gameplay because my parents would always like kick me off, and I'd always have limited time to play. So I was always like, nope, I'm playing. This is what I'm doing. You just, whatever. Uh-huh. But um, one thing that... Was was integral and what's really cool is actually we're expecting some twenty fifth Pokemon announcements like a couple of days after this podcast comes out. Um, as I always remember, Pokemon was that one thing that we both played the hell yep. out of. Link cabled up, oh, trading yeah. away. Yep, gotta collect them all, gotta oh, yeah. catch them all. Um, and I'll always remember that. I just wanted to bring that because I had to oh, get yeah. a twenty fifth anniversary Pokemon. Oh yeah, for sure. That is coming. Yeah. I'm not talking about it now just because we know it's coming, and that'll probably be a huge topic next Next week. cast, yep. Uh, because I'm, if we get nothing in out, I'm going to be shocked because they've been teasing even like a little tweet out. They, they tweeted out, let's go, Sinnoh. They've set the internet ablaze. So I don't know what's happening. <laughs> and I was a fan of the let's go games. Like, I don't know, maybe one of ten. That was a fan. I have no idea. But <laughs> um, So uh, let's head over to Misclick. What's Zelda mean to you? That's a loaded question, but I'll try to keep it brief. Um, Zelda for me, very similar. I have two sisters. We're very close in age. We're each about a little over a year apart, the three of us. Um, You know, we loved multiplayer games, but when we first got a hold of it, you know, um, it was something that we experienced together. I was the oldest, so, you know, I played and it ended up awakening my love also for just narrating and, 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 um, you know, voice acting, I guess, for the different characters. Cause my sisters read, you know, they were younger, they read a little bit slower. So I just read the game to them and it became a bonding experience. And it went from like this childhood thing to where, you know, um, not having all the systems, you know, all the handhelds Zelda to me came out every five, six years, um, as, as I, as I viewed it, or, you know, being a family of uh, lower income, you know, I only got a game every five or six years and I played the heck out of it when I had it. So Zelda to me became kind of this, um, milestone checker in life to where it was like every five years looking back where I was the first day I got the previous game and how, how's my life changed since then? How have I grown up? How have I become a new human? What has stayed the same? Um, what are things that I look back on fondly or things I'm glad are gone? Um, and Zelda, you know, other than that, I think it sounds really cheesy, but as a kid, you know, you have heroes that you look up to and people that you aspire to be. And I just loved the fact that Link, despite all the odds, did what he could to save the people that, you know, or to save the people that he didn't even necessarily have a reason to. He could have been like, nah, I'm fine. But he still, he still decided, you know, to to put his best foot forward and and have the courage to save the world against all odds. And that was something I looked up to as a kid. So I think for me, it was also a little bit of a moral compass checker. Um, and then also like to see how I've grown up. So now, you know, when Breath of the Wild 2 uh, comes out, I think back to where I was, you know, when Breath of the Wild 1 came out and how my life has drastically changed even since then, even when I thought there was nothing else that could make another drastic change. It's just, it's a really cool experience that it's kind of grown up with us mm-hmm. uh, and they acknowledge that. And it's something that will ever shape, shift and evolve to where, I don't know if Zelda will ever end one day, if it ends with the legends or, you know, however that decides to come, but it'll definitely be something that, you know, if I ever do have kids one day, I let them experience for themselves and um, see how they, I guess, react to it for the very first time and make sure someone other than the oldest child will get to play it. (laughs) So yeah, no, it's a very special series to me. Yeah. My, uh, my oldest son, um, told me the other day and he he's only played breath of the wild for maybe five minutes um but he's watched me play it a ton and when i, I asked him the other day you know if you out of all the games that, that i have here for switch you know 100 games or whatever 
you know, what do you want to play? Because he plays a lot of Mario games. Sure. And he's like, well, if I can only play one, i would be Breath of the Wild. I'm like, but you barely played it. Are you sure you're not going to pick, like, Mario, like, 3D World? You've been playing a lot of that lately. He's like, no, because the game doesn't end. I'm like, oh, okay. I mean... Yeah, it's valid. Yeah, uh, it's sure. pretty. It's, it's pretty. It's, and I'm like, and I'm like, why? He's like, and and he just said, Dad, I know how much Zelda means to you, and I oh. want to play it. Just Bless for his you. heart. And I and I and I'm just like, are you saying this just to sucker me into more video games, <laughs> <laughs> or right? because you actually legitimately are being sweet and actually want to play it because you know I'm a huge fan of it? Um, <laughs> Because my other kids don't, don't care too much about Zelda, and that, that's fine. I'm all the, they sure. discover their own games and their own mm-hmm. um, things that they enjoy in life. If they're not even in the games, that's totally fine. Which they're all in the games, so I don't have to worry about that. But and then now, now I understand as a parent why parents would try to limit games. I get it. Right. I understand now that I'm on the other side. Um, but uh, Zelda, so Zelda was like an escape for me. The reason it, it became so special is because I, I, I've i told this story before. It's been a long time. I grew up in a, a fairly good home. I had both parents. Uh, we were poor, but, you know, if, it feels like everyone was poor back then for some reason. Um, and my parents fought a lot. Like, mm. a lot about everything. Literally, it didn't matter if I had Eric or friends. It didn't matter. It was always... It was not behind closed doors. Yeah. No. No. If you knew. Like, they would try to not do it in public. But the moment you got into the car, it's just... So, like, I don't know if you guys have seen that Zelda Zelda fan film called Escape. Yep. Um, I loved it. I cried. That was, like, (laughs) my childhood. It was Mm -hmm. turn to Zelda to get the hell away from my life. Not because my life is, like, the worst life ever. But I didn't want to just focus so much on the arguing happening around me all the goddamn time. And yeah, I even got my GameCube smashed by my dad. He oh. literally smashed it because I was playing it too much. And, mm. and 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 what I didn't understand is like in that escape show, like I get why the parents are upset or because their grades were suffering. Sure. But like I was a straight A student, so why are you mad at me? <laughs> I play sports. I'm a straight A student and I'm playing a game. What the hell is the, and I obviously had to do with stuff going on in their life and his Mm -hmm. life. And, um, so it really wasn't about me, but it was also like uh, one of those moments, like when, when the parent unplugs the system and all that. And I'm just like, man, I've been there. And it it just, if you guys want even a taste of of what my childhood was like, like you can go watch that movie, um, or that little mini show and kind of give you a taste of what it means to escape in a game. And I'm sure I'll, you know, a lot of you guys, if you're watching a, a passionate podcast like this, you probably know what it means to escape into a video game, to get away from whatever's going on in your life. It doesn't just have to be as a child, by the way. Um, I've had complications in my relationship that I've escaped to Breath of the Wild for as an adult, like just mm. entered into that world as a parent frustrated with your children. They go to bed. I'm turning on a video game. I got to get away. I, I need to go somewhere where... I'm the hero in my own story. And in a way with your children, you can be the hero in their story, but when they don't show the appreciation for what you do, because I know from a kid that comes later in life, usually it doesn't happen early. Um, it, it's, it's one of those situations where Zelda's always been that game. I could escape to. I've played a lot of games, a lot of games, but Zelda's always been the one that it's like, look, if I'm in a rough spot in my life, it's Zelda that's getting turned on. Sure. Of course. Something about it. Just, I don't know if it's Link's struggle. I don't know. Um, if it's just how he overcomes expectations of someone who like doesn't, he's just a kid. In most, yep. he's just a kid. Yeah, maybe there's something special about him to try for. That's great, but if there's something special about him, is there something special about me? Mm-hmm. And how am I gonna call upon my own triforce of courage to get through whatever I'm going through? Um, and so it's just always been there, and I think always will be. Uh, the fact that when Breath of the Wild 2's trailer dropped. And I was reacting, and I almost had a heart attack on stream. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> and I, I mean, God, that was what? How, how many years ago back was that now? That was uh, Two. 2019? Yeah. yeah, so I was like, what, 32, 33 years yep. old? And here I am, I, like, literally, like, I'm a little kid that just got, the, like, an announcement of, like, a sequel to their favorite movie or something, like Frozen 2 or whatever. Honestly, like, watching that trailer, getting all excited as a kid, it's like, I literally, 
you know, Yulia, my fiance, watches it, and she goes, I've never seen you get that excited before. I'm like, you just don't understand. Yeah, no, like, it's... Zelda's a different level for me. Sure. And it's not more important than you. It's not more important than the kids. But it's like, it's been there for me more mm-hmm. than almost anybody in my life but you. And yeah, when good things happen in your life, I get really excited too. And it's not going to be as big a deal as my wedding day. But next to the birth of my children and a wedding, don't really know too many moments that are a bigger deal to me. Even when I f- finish off no, college that yeah. I'm in right now. Like, it'll be nice to know I graduated. But I'm going to feel even better when I beat Breath of the Wild too. Yeah. And I know. <laughs> And I know it because you, just because you graduate college doesn't guarantee job success, doesn't guarantee careers. But what is guaranteed is I'm beating Breath of the Wild too. And you're going to enjoy it. And I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> like, there, there's no doubt, no matter what mistakes they make or things I don't like about it, I'm going to love enough. Because I've loved enough of every Zelda game. Even the ones that I'm not a big fan of. Like, I'm not a big fan of Phantom Hourglass. It doesn't matter. I still mm-hmm. really enjoy playing it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. It's kind of like for Miss Click, you know, it's kind of like a, a representative of her life growing up. You know, Eric, a representative of our friendship. Me, a representative of just, God dang, has it always been there for me? Game over, Jesse. What's Zelda mean to you? Oh, I've I've told this story a couple of times. I don't know if I've ever mentioned it on your channel before, but I'm sure uh, probably you and Miss Click both have heard some sort of variation of it but basically not just my first gaming or zelda memory but my first memory period that i well can remember is uh when i was like three maybe four years old uh possibly younger i don't really know but anyways uh my brother was in elementary school at the time and our parents would wake me up when they will come up to get him ready for school. One parent would stay with him and get him ready and everything. And the other parent would stay with me and we would play uh, like a link to the past or Lion King or Aladdin or whatever. But most of the time it was a link to the past. And uh, I ended up just like falling in love with the game. And then I remember in uh for christmas when ocarina of time came out i got it and that took me even uh deeper into the games and uh yeah so now uh whenever i think about the zelda series especially a link to the past i think about how my mom who doesn't even like games at all would still sit through and play that game with me and be able to like figure out the puzzles and beat the bosses better than I was at the time. And then uh, when Breath of the Wild came out, my little brother and I were playing through it. And my dad, who had never really played uh, video games, um, he would play through Breath of the Wild with us just because he likes the whole, uh, basically anything that looks in any way similar to Lord of the Rings or any medieval <laughs> there kind of stuff. There, yeah, so, uh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So he would uh he would watch us playing it and he would get drawn into it and he started his own file and everything and uh played through the I think he made it off the Great Plateau and that was it. But it's still interesting uh times. And then even now with uh my daughter and uh, Link's Awakening. She loves Link's Awakening, even though she doesn't have any real connection to Zelda. Um, she still really likes that game. Uh, being able to go fishing and just, uh, she usually just stays around the first area and plays with the cuckoos or the chickens. <laughs> but yeah. You know, and that always makes me wonder like, Link's Awakening and Breath of the Wild, like, even with Breath of the Wild, obviously, introducing a whole new like generation of people to zelda it always makes me think like i don't know what it is about this game but for some reason when you're a kid and you play it it just sticks for whatever Mm -hmm. reason it i don't know how nintendo does it but they find a way to make it connect at all ages and somehow make people who played it a long time happy but also people who have never seen it before just fascinated um and i'm not sure how they do i don't know you know nintendo's always been this company that's you know for everybody 
But like Zelda is like that one franchise that's like, no, but this is legitimately, it means something to so many people sure. in such a deep way. And like, I think about my son now as he's watching Let's Plays of Breath of the Wild and playing himself because mm-hmm. I got him his own copy. He doesn't know yet. He's getting, he, he got a Switch for oh. his birthday like last year. And as excited as he was, he started taking it to school and it got stolen. Oh. It, it is what it is. I felt bad about it, but I was also not in a good place financially at the time to really do anything about it. So, it it, it kind of sucked. He doesn't know he's getting he's getting a switch later this year. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, Santa got him his own copy of Breath of the Wild um, in preparation. That's exciting. In preparation, he doesn't. I I don't know how he doesn't get this yet. I have my own copy. You don't have to get it again. It hasn't really clicked with him yet. <laughs> yeah. That oh, by the way, this means you're getting your own system, he, so you Aww. have to use Dad's yeah. copy and yeah. take my copy out of the house and lose it. Um, so, like, knowing that he's already building that connection, knowing that when I play the game, all three of my kids will walk into my office, sit on the couch, and just sit there and not even say a word and just watch me play it, and just in sheer amazement at what's going on. My daughter, she likes the game. I, c- controls are a little complicated for her for some reason. I don't know why mm. she's ten. I I don't know why she hasn't figured it out yet, but she still loves watching it. And it's like even mm. just watching in the era of yep. watching streamers, you know, all of us stream, all of us have streamed Zelda games and played stuff. Like watching how people could just be amazed at watching people play, even mm. if they can't get into playing it themselves. Something about Zelda captivates people. I I really think you hit on it though earlier with with Link and Zelda being kids slash young young adults ish yep, that, that uh you know really and their struggles and them persevering and everything like that that it you can always see yourself in that character whereas like mario he's an old fat plumber can you really see yourself in he's him just fun. he's just fun. he's just fun. fun but i think there's something with link and with zelda that people can see themselves in it well, even, like, when you think of just Breath of the Wild, like, Princess Zelda, from the very beginning, when you start to learn about the past, there's all these expectations on her. Like, she's supposed yeah. to be, like, the key to stopping everything. And she can't figure out why she can't call upon her power. And it's okay and, to... And it, and it teaches you it's okay to fail. Yeah. To it, a certain extent. It, it, you will persevere. Kind of like kids. Parents put expectations on their kids. You need to get your sure. grades. You need to do this. You need to do that. And then you're not always going to live up to those expectations. And that's what happened with Zelda. She was failing to live up to the possibly unrealistic expectations her father put upon her based on a prophecy. And it's kind of like, oh, we want our kids to always be better than we are, so we always put these expectations on them, trying to get them to work hard, trying to get them to be responsible, and they don't always live up to it. And sometimes they feel great shame and disappointment. And this is, you know, kids get sometimes depressed over this stuff because they feel like they're failing their family. Yep. Um, and Zelda kind of teaches you it's okay to not be perfect to mess up it's about just don't give up. back up and not you know mm-hmm. don't give up just because things aren't going well in the moment and that's something i learned from zelda and i'm trying to teach it to my kids like, hey yeah i know you can do better in school i know that let's work towards it. let's figure out why you're not and just pick yourself up mm-hmm. and dust yourself off and get back at it you don't have to just kick yourself you know like the hardest thing for me was we i have a daughter who has depression um and before before we uh, were willing to get her looked at and um, trying to deal with it through counseling and everything, um, she would always say, like, anytime something bad happened at school, if she got a bad grade on a spelling test or whatever, because she knew, that, you know, that we wanted her to get good grades, but we're more important that, to us that she just does her best. And sure. she would feel so down on herself. She'd come home and say, I'm a loser, mm. Dad. I'm, I'm oh. a loser. And I looked her in the face and I just said, no, you're not. I know, like, we're not even putting, you're putting these expectations on yourself because you want to make us so proud. And it's like, we are proud of you. It's okay. Yeah, you know you can do better. It's good that you know that you can do better. But you don't have to, like, kick yourself when you're down. Like, let's think, what can we do to do better next time? Like, can we change our study Mm -hmm. habits? Can we try flashcards? Can we do something different than what we've been doing to help you retain the information? And she just said, I don't know, Dad. I don't know. I'm just a loser. And I'm like, I... I remember talking to my fiance about it, and I'm like, we can't let our kids feel like just because they didn't do their best or they let themselves down or let us down that there's nowhere to go. And I, and she, and Julia said, well, how did you deal with it? I'm like, I had Zelda. 
Mm-hmm. My parents didn't teach me that. My parents did nothing but make me feel like a disappointment. Because I do have a really high IQ. Things are easier for me. So when I didn't put in the effort and I did get low grades, punishments were swift. Punishments were hard. And they never made me feel like it was okay to not want the same things that they want. Mm -hmm. Because they wanted me to do this and that, and I just didn't really have an interest in it. My parents hate that I do YouTube. They are not supportive of this at all. Even after all this time? Even after all this time. Mm -hmm. They do not care. Yep. Hmm. They think it's a waste of time. Yep. They have given up trying to tell me what to do. But they don't fundamentally understand. And I don't think they ever will. I don't think they've ever been open-minded enough to understand. And that's okay in, in some regards. Now Nowadays, they've more or less just kind of let it be. They know I do it. They know I'm in college as well. But they know I do it, and they just kind of leave it alone. But in the back of their mind, anytime things come up, they're like, you're wasting your life, you're this, you're that. And I'm like, but... I enjoy what I do. And like sometimes there's things that are just more important than paychecks. And I grew up poor, so to my parents it's always paychecks, money, you have a family to support, and my family is supported. So I don't know what else you want me to do. Be, you know, yeah. should, should I be happy? And and I understand as a kid growing up, the pressure always put on me. Like my parents wanted me to be a doctor growing up. Hey, you have the brain, be a doctor. Be I'm like, but I don't want to be that stuff. Ever consider what I want to do? Mm-hmm. And I think that happens with the kids where they, where my children want to be better than we were, be in better places than we are. Not you know, because my my children are experiencing right now where we only have one car. You know, we mm. had two. Both cars broke down. We were able to you know scrounge together enough to get one more car. But like, yeah. We can't always go everywhere because mom's at work or dad's at work or we don't, you know, it is I understand what it is. That. And yeah. they, don't, they don't want to see themselves in that situation. And it's like, but just because you're not always attaining what the goals you have doesn't mean that mm-hmm. you're failing. You need to find your own path, find your own wants right. and desires. Um, sure. But Zelda was how I did it. And so I think Zelda is actually helping my son a lot. He's ever since he started playing Breath of the Wild, he has actually become less afraid of communicating at school um, good, because he doesn't communicate his feelings very well. But since he started playing Zelda, now the teachers actually know what's going on. Um, of course today, God, that, that little, that little crap today. You know what he did? Hmm. I got a phone call from the school. Hey, does someone in your house have COVID? I'm like, no. Oh, it's like, geez. well, your son's walking around telling everyone that everyone has COVID in your house. Oh, I'm Lord. Like, oh, Lord. I'm like, oh, he, so he gets home and I'm like, dude, what, what the hell, man? Like, this is not good, you know. Your teachers can get like in serious in trouble. Issues. Oh boy, yeah. Like, yeah. Or, like, like you don't joke about this, and, yeah, he's no. ju- and he's just like, "I just wanted you to pick me up so I could play Zelda." I'm like, "No, no, 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 that's, no, no, no." no. no. no, no. And this yeah. is why pa- you learn as a parent that sometimes video games go a little too far with some kids. All right, <laughs> oh, gosh. you're making stuff up to get sent home. Yeah, okay, yeah. no. <laughs> um. Anyways, yeah, Jeez. Zelda's obviously a big deal for all of us. Um, I want to thank you, uh, everyone, for tuning in. Hey, uh, where can they find you guys at? Game Lord Jesse, you got something to say? I see your hand raised up like you're yeah. in class. Oh, no, I was oh. pressing a mute and unmute. <laughs> I just glanced behind me and he's like, he's raising his hand up. Yeah. Um, hello, welcome to the class. <laughs> um, so, uh, Game Lord Jesse, where can they find you? Uh, yeah, I uh, was lucky enough to have everything at or slash Game Over Jesse. So Twitter.com slash Game Over Jesse hey, if you want to hey, keep up to date on stuff. It's uh, different YouTube. <laughs> yeah, uh, YouTube is uh, slash Game Over Jesse. Um, Twitch.tv uh, slash Game Over Jesse. There's a Facebook page and a Facebook group. Uh, that you can find by just typing in Game Over Jesse or Highland Gamescast. And if uh, there is anything out there where you can make a profile, chances are it is also <laughs> Game Over Jesse. So basically, I'm nice. going to Google Game Over Jesse, and everything I find, I'll link it down in the description for you guys. If yeah, there you, go. You, know, <laughs> yeah. you, you want to see him do a TikTok dance, it might be out there. I have no idea. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, where could they find you, Miss Click? Yeah, thanks for having me. This was a this was a pleasure. I, I love just being able to talk about Zelda, and obviously constructive criticism about what could be changed and bettered, but not be all doom and gloom about it. 
like uh, oh. the internet tends to be. Yeah, so it's really the internet nice. is like yeah. extreme one way. Everything's on fire. And I'm like, you know what else is on fire? Hyrule Castle Town. We could have <laughs> a lot more. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> uh, especially right now with all the Blizzard stuff going on. Like, oh. y'all, this is what we're going to focus on right now. Jeez. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, you can find me on YouTube as Miss Click Gaming. Other than that, um, I'm pretty much just misclick on on everything else. Um, I misclick underscore live on uh, twi- uh, Twitch, which we stream pretty much um, every day except for Sunday. But uh, yeah, just uh, we love Zelda. Um, I think Zelda's also awakened my love for Let's Plays. We do tons of Let's Plays um, of games on all different consoles and, and PC and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, it's a good time had by all. Um, I love meeting new... I love... How do I say? I know how important Zelda is to me. So when someone plays Zelda and experiences it because they know I love it, it means a lot. So I like playing the games that are their Zelda to them. And, you know, they get to watch my reaction thusly. So it's an honor. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Hope I can have you guys on a future episode down the line. Cool. All right. Thank you guys for uh, watching. Uh, You can find this podcast obviously right here on YouTube if you happen to be watching the YouTube version. If you're not and you're listening to the audio version on iTunes, Google Podcasts, uh, God, we're everywhere. Anchor, Spotify. I don't. We're literally on like twelve different platforms, audio wise. If you happen to find us through there and you want to see the video version, we have a full-on video version on YouTube, fully edited trailers, lots of a, a, a wonderful set. If I do say so myself, I don't know. It's different than any other set I've seen, so <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to be original over here. Um, otherwise, uh, as I said, go find us on anywhere you prefer to listen to podcasts. We're probably there, and if we're not, let me know, and I will get us there, because I want to be where you want your ears to be, whether you're working out, driving in a car, um, maybe you're listening to it while you play games, because some people do that. So, all right. Thank you, guys. Catch you in the next episode.